Good morning and afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this Infobox webinar on elevating your network and network services with emphasis on DNS security. My name is David Vanesky. I am a product marketing manager at Infobox. Uh, I handle core network services. I'll be uh, guiding you through part of this webinar, and uh, Sam will be guiding you through the other part. Sam, why don't you introduce yourself? Yes, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sam Kumarsamy, and I work in product marketing, specifically focused on security. Great. So um, with no further ado, let's get started. Um, first of all, let me thank everybody for uh, carving out a little bit of your day to come up, uh, attend this webinar. We appreciate that. We know you're busy, uh, and we will try to make this informative uh, and concise at the same time. So our agenda is pretty tight. Um, we're going to do a very fast introduction of InfoBlox, in case you're unfamiliar. Um, then we're going to talk about DNS um, and threat protection. Sam will walk you through um, uh, that part of the content. I will talk about our core bundle promotion program, something uh, we think is pretty interesting and exciting uh, and uh, very timely right now to talk about. We'll, we'll finish up talking about some of the next steps uh, you might take with, uh, if you have interest in any one of the things you hear about. And then we will close by um, handling any questions uh, uh, that you have. Uh, please note that uh, there is a Q&A uh, button or window that you can go to. It's a, it should be at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions, uh, answer or uh, pose them there. We may be able to answer them while we're talking, uh, but uh, sometimes it's difficult to present and answer questions at the same time. So uh, if you ask a question, we may uh, end up uh, holding it to the end and doing a little code review and compile before we uh, go through all, all the Q's and A's. Um, so just again, a quick introduction of Infoblox. Who are we? Uh, Infoblox has been around for a while in the what we, what we call the DDI or DHCP, DNS, and IP address managers space. We have over 7,000 customers, so over 7,000 organizations rely on us every day. Uh, to enable their networks, to enable uh, DDI, uh, to provide DDI, as well as DNS security. Uh, among those 7,000, um, the vast majority of the Fortune 100 companies rely on us. Uh, we are a global company. We have global sales, global support uh, across all the major continents. Uh, and uh, in case uh, in case you were wondering, uh, DDI is what was DNS security. Uh, they are our core businesses. Uh, they're not sidelines for us. Uh, it is what we do. We consistently invest in DDI as well as DNS security to deliver the best product uh, all the time. You may note uh, over on the right side uh, is a foreshortened list of some of our strategic alliance partners. Um, we do a lot of things ourselves, um, but we do uh, leverage and are leveraged by a number of other, other companies. Uh, for, for technologies as well as for go-to-market activities. Uh, so, so companies uh, integrate our product with theirs, such as VMware, uh, and, and we are integrated into vSphere. And we, we realize uh, some of the security companies like Carbon Black and Rapid7 uh, and others use our open APIs uh, to leverage the network information that we have uh, and we, that we maintain uh, to enhance security. Uh, and there are companies like Splunk, whose technology is part of our solution. So uh, our ecosystem is, I think, well in excess of 20 partners right now, and it's something that we maintain, uh, and it's a way to ultimately deliver a better solution. So uh, with no further ado, let's uh, let's talk about DNS security, and I'll hand it over to Sam. Hey, uh, thank you, David. So. As David pointed out, um, Infoblox is a leader in the DDI space, and as we evolved as a company, our uh, customers have started asking us about uh, security. So, you know, and uh, w what is very interesting is the DNS, <clears throat> there is a DNS gap from a, a threat vector perspective, which l many of the companies ignore today because they think they have a next generation firewall or a email proxy or a web proxy and um, or email gateway for that matter or web proxy or intrusion prevention systems and so on they think they are covered and uh, but you know 
all these solutions do not address the DNS security gap because they do not focus specifically on communication that happens through DNS. And, and, and if you really look at it uh, from a perspective of uh, what are the issues, you, you, you can see here as it scrolls through, DNS is a major security gap because, you know, it's like you have all these defenses. By the way, all those firewalls, email gateways, all, that, all those uh, security vendors are extremely important because obviously they do block known signatures in their respective areas, be it through email, web traffic, and so on. But surveys have shown that DNS is a major gap. You know, it's like having a it's like having a gate and no fence around it. You know, that's the analogy we like to use. And uh, as you can see here, from an infrastructure perspective, DNS DNS is used for most common application layer attacks, like 78% of the time. And these are surveys conducted by SC Magazine, Bonamon Institute. You know, well-known uh, Cisco's own security survey that that they do on a, a yearly basis or by yearly basis, by annual basis, um, and more than 500 million, uh, more than 500 dollars is per per minute cost of downtime of DDoS attacks. And as you know, DDoS attacks are very expensive because they can cause extreme damage in terms of um, um, making your network unavailable, which means you can't do business, your customers are unhappy, and eventually you lose revenue as well. The other important fact to notice here, and I'm moving to the uh, green button here, is it's a leading culprit for data exfiltration. So, you know, connecting to CNC sites, you know, your, your end user devices within your organizations are infected with some sort of a malware that spreads laterally and over a period of time extracts information. And the statistics here clearly point out that it's a major issue. You know, and all this data exfiltration happens through DNS. And there are several uh, ways of doing that. You know, it's based on signatures, reputation. You know, there are many ways that people, DNS tunneling is another methodology that is used. And as I pointed out in the blue button here, uh, malware proliferation through DNS is another major factor which eventually leads to data exfiltration. And here the percentages are staggering. 91% of malware uses DNS to carry out campaigns. I mean, it's incredible. And malware, uh, CNC is the number one responsible vector for crimeware in terms of malware using it. So again, you see the importance on the need for protecting your DNS. So you need an extra layer of defense. And there's this whole concept of threat intelligence for because you know you need that information on malicious IP addresses domain names or URL, and that list needs to be updated and curated, and that's what you mean by threat intelligence, because you just can't take external uh, feeds, like, say, from open source, and just apply it and think you're protected. You know, you apply that threat intelligence or, or the list, a blacklist of malicious domains and so on. That intelligence needs to be curated. It needs to be timely. When you apply it to your DNS, for example, or even to other security vendors like your firewall and all that. So because ineffective threat intelligence leads to untimely uh, threat intelligence, which is, again, ineffective because people don't trust it. And then there's no context for prioritization. You know, there should be a context to it. It does not mean a blacklist is a back blacklist. You need to be able to um, double-click on it and find out what kind of a malware it is. Is it coming from a known CNC site? Or is it a certain type of malware like rabbit malware? So that's the kind of categorization. And then, you know, adding that prioritization to uh, to the threat so that, you know, you have a priority to block it and do remediation. All that is lacking currently in threat intelligence. So all this leads to a DNS gap, and there's a need to provide an additional layer of defense at the DNS level. So how can InfoBlock help? excuse me, specifically, we have something called the Advanced DNS Protection Solution. It defends against the widest range of DNS attacks, both against external and internal DNS servers, meaning both authoritative and recursive. And it blocks threats 
while maintaining the availability. That's very important, right? Because you cannot have downtime because of an attack, which I pointed out uh, basically from statistics, that will lead to downtime, your network becoming unavailable and causing all the damage, right? You lose customers and eventually revenue. So we block all sorts of volumetric and exploit-based attacks from a DNS perspective. So like DDoS, for example, specifically focused on DNS type. TCP, IDP, <clears throat> we also prevent data exfiltration through tunneling, through known tools such as iodine and so on. And uh, we also prevent hijacking, reconnaissance type of attacks, cache poisoning, and protocol anomalies as well. So that's the widest range we talk about, protecting. That's very important to remember. Um, we, and so the three takeaways really from a business perspective is we offer the ability to protect against all these types of external DNS and internal DNS attacks. And we also maintain service availability because, you know, we, we make sure your service is not disrupted. And we have two ways of doing that. One is, and I'll talk a little more in detail, one is just a software subscription for people who are more familiar, who, are, who have a cloud-first strategy. We offer a software subscription on physical or virtual appliances. And then for the real high-end, we also have dedicated boxes for very high-end transactions per second. And for that, we offer some dedicated processing. That's how we help you reduce service disruption. From, uh, from DDoS and other type of attacks. We also have threat feeds that are updated constantly because obviously in order to be up to date on the known signatures and so on, we, we do have something called the threat app technology that we use to make sure you're up to date on the latest signatures. And we provide the rapid deployment without patching. So, so those are some of those um, key features or differentiators that we provide in addition to blocking the widest range of attacks. And then we boil it down to how do we utilize this data for threat management? We, we, we have our own reporting and analytics as uh, David pointed out. You know, we use a version of Splunk. We call it reporting and anal analytics, very customized so that we can provide you with sources and patterns of attacks. The reports are very customized to provide information on DDoS type of attacks. And then we have unified console as well, where you can see all of this under one single console, right? So you don't have to go to multiple places to view this. And, and that's the beauty about the centralized reporting and analytics. I wanted to double click and talk a little bit about our software enabled models. So we support, and this is, like I mentioned, it's double-clicking because we are sp talking specifically software subscription supported on these models, which we call a software ADP. So if you are an existing customer of a Trinsic 815, 825, or 1415, we support it both on physical and virtual appliances, and it's both we provide both VMware and KVM support. The benefits really is, a one single license to download on the existing appliance. So if you are already a DDI customer and have one of these appliances, it's a matter of just downloading a single subscription model, uh, sorry, a single subscription software that you can, so, so basically from a benefit perspective, you're leveraging your existing investments. It's easy adoption because you don't need any forklift upgrades. If, if, if you're already running a, a, a DNS on-prem, for example, you, you can install the software, the ADP software. It comes with the signatures and everything all in a single subscription. So you no longer have to only rely on PT appliances or dedicated boxes. So that's the beauty. It's very easy. And especially for enterprise customers up to like 50,000 transactions per second, it's, it's a very good option. And again, that flexible deployment option is basically you're moving away from a CapEx model to an OpEx model. And that's the direction that most of the companies are moving towards in terms of, you know, going with a subscription-based model. You see like other companies as well, like Cisco, doing the same thing. So, you know, that's the trend, and I'm sure 
um, uh, our customers like yourselves are also doing the same thing, and we want to enable that. The other option, if you're looking for higher transactions than 50,000, say like 75,000, 200,000, we have higher end dedicated physical appliances, the PT 1405, 2205, 4000. They have the next generation programmable processes embedded. So that's the acceleration that you get to get to that higher level of transactions. But again, transactions is just one measure. You might have like number of objects in the database and so on. So this is something that you will have to discuss with our technical team. So we totally understand that, you know, we have to do the care and feeding. So it's not a matter of just discussing it over, uh, you know, through to a salesperson, but really, you know, we, we want to make sure that our SCs are able to answer all your questions before suggesting an appliance. So it's very important to know all your requirements before moving it. And these appliances offer both AC and DC power supply options as well. If you want to get started, you can download a, well, actually you have to fill out a form for a free ADP evaluation, especially if you're a new prospect. That means if you're not already a customer of ours, a DDI customer, which many of our folks are, many most of them are, but you know, especially if you're a new customer, new to InfoBlocks, you can fill out the form and we will have an SC get in touch with you within your respective region because the form is filled. It, uh, once you fill out the form, we'll have an SC contact you to determine requirements. And, and for the existing intrinsic customers of ours, the three appliances I talked about for the software subscription, you fill out another form and you will, we will still have an SC contact you to make sure your requirements uh, are defined before we make a recommendation for you to download the software. To learn more about the product, you can actually go to our website as well in case you want to learn more before you try out the evaluation or in parallel, you can do that too. The next is I'm going to talk about is from a data protection and malware mitigation perspective. We talked about the DDoS attacks previously. Now, we have a product called Active Trust, and it's available both for on-prem as well as on, on a cloud subscription basis. So, you know, and this is, again, we know, you know, we are tuning it to our customers' requirements because we know many of our customers have an on-prem DDI. But we also understand that there's this big movement towards the cloud. So if, you, if you're a customer making that transition or already have made that transition, we want to ensure that we have a SaaS-based service as well to help you prevent cyber attacks on your devices or um, users both on-prem as well as roaming and uh, branch office or business offices. So what this product does, which is called Active Trust. We have an on-prem version that will basically um, um, protect you, protect your on-prem users, meaning um, within the organization, and then also for remote users. So we prevent DNS-based data exfiltration. Again, notice that key terminology that I use is basically DNS. It's all DNS-based data exfiltration and malware communications. Because again, to repeat, that is an important threat vector that you cannot ignore. And we also, from a threat intelligence I talked to you about, we have a way of consolidating all the threat intelligence on a single platform. So when you buy our product, you also, based on the tier that you purchase, and we typically recommend the higher tiers, you will get more threat intelligence because more threat intelligence means you can apply and block, uh, you can either monitor or block more threats. and. Uh, we curate that information also with, through our own research team to make sure there are no false positives. And we also refresh the data pretty quickly, which means you get the most up-to-date information so you don't get any false positives. So we are able to curate all that in a single platform and then distribute it to our DNS firewall, which is basically um, uh, to Active Trust, which contains the DNS firewalls which basically can block indicators of compromise at that level or even pass it on to your third-party products like SIN and so on as well. Um, we also provide a threat investigation tool. 
So basically to provide that context and prioritization. So what we can do is should you suspect a particular, you want to have more double click on a particular IP address or URL, it can actually drill down and say which country it's coming from. Is that a known hacker associated with it? And if even, you know, if we have that information through this kind of consolidated threat investigation tool, uh, we can provide that information regarding the email address of that particular hacker to block and so on. So we 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 can prioritize those type of threats saying, hey, they've been to a previous organization and therefore needs to be blocked immediately because we know that's a real vicious kind of attack. Maybe it's a malware generated or ransomware and so on. We also classify the different threats um, uh, like I mentioned, like whether it's coming from a certain CNC site or is it a rabbit malware which needs to be blocked. We all, as I mentioned, and this is all done through our platform, a single platform that can actually consolidate threats from both external and internal sources. What the dual, having the on-prem and the cloud version can do is you have single reporting which you can view the reporting on the cloud where you get all the information from your on-prem DDI as well as from the cloud-based DDI should you be kind of you know moving in that direction, you can have consolidated reporting all in a single location. And that's what I talk about here is the data protection and malware mitigation. We have the DNS firewall that can block at the DNS control plane any type of communications, especially to CNC sites. And it can also detect malware uh, uh, sorry, data exfiltration via malware. So, you know, we can prevent using reputation-based, signature-based, and we also use streaming analytics, real-time streaming of DNS query data to find out if somebody is sending data. So we actually look at packets of uh, uh, information going through DNS queries and responses. Um, so we are exceptional in that we are the only ones who use all those three methodologies that I talked about. Makes us very, very unique. Uh, I talked about the rapid threat investigation using the dossier tool. I talked about the tied threat information data exchange platform that consolidates threat feeds. And then I talked about the centralized reporting that we can have the unified reporting for both on-prem and uh, in the cloud DDI as well. Um, and then the ecosystem integrations, you know, that um, David was talking about, we partner with a lot of vendors. so. We totally understand DNS is one of the security vectors, um, threat vectors. So we want to make sure we can integrate with other third party like Carbon Black, Qualys, the different vulnerability, the different SIMs like Splunk and so on. So we can pass on the DNS indicators of compromise or directly the threat intelligence data can be distributed to all the other security infrastructure and security ecosystem. Just from a tiering perspective, so that you have a good understanding of security, this is for the on-prem where you have the DNS on-prem. So the DNS server uh, is, is not outsourced or anything. You have it on-prem. So many companies still have that option. In that case, you know, you have some basic threat feeds that you get with the standard version. You do not get the tight platform, which enables you to consolidate the threat feeds from various sources. For that, you need to subscribe for plus and advanced. And as you can see, you can start getting, you know, information on host names, IP addresses, and URLs. The InfoBlocks dossier is the threat investigation, threat investigation tool. It's not available with the base version of the on-prem solution, but if you subscribe for the plus and advanced, you can have certain number of queries per year. Again, the advanced version being the more data you get and the more threat feeds you get, the more queries you can have, and more information you can gather from type. And the threat intelligence is very important. As you know, many organizations are looking at it as a way of preventing, uh, proactively preventing threats, known threats. So the more threat intelligence you have, especially if it's validated by InfoBlox, it's not going to give you the false positives or just taking it from a third party. We do the curation and add additional context to it. So that's what makes this unique. The other thing to notice is the standard version comes priced on an appliance-based model, so all the more reason to move to plus and advanced. 
And you also notice the plus in advance includes the threat in sight in the cloud, which prevents data exfiltration through uh, DNS. So that is included for free with the advanced versions, but not with the base version. The next is the cloud. So this is for companies who have a cloud-first strategy. So especially like, you know, mostly like retailers or, you know, who have internet, uh, um, they're using, you know, they're, they're a company that uses the uh, internet to do business and so on, like the retail industry. There are many universities as well moving in that direction or uh, uh, car dealership and, and so on. Uh, they are. They don't want any on-prem infrastructure. So they want to completely outsource it, and we can actually do that. We have several points of presence throughout the world, and we can actually host your DNS and take care of everything there. So the, the great news about this is it actually provides you hands-off experience. So you know this is this is a big movement towards the cloud uh, that's happening nowadays, and. We want to enable that. So this is totally a subscription base. It's not based on a more on an appliance because you don't have any appliances on prem. Everything is handled by InfoBlocks. So for your roaming users, remote users, you will you you know highly recommended. It. it can take care of on prem as well, especially if you are moving to the cloud completely. This is the best option for you. And we also supply public APIs for integration into you know, other security events. You have a SIM, we can forward those indicators of compromise directly from the cloud. I told you the reporting we can enable. If you have on-prem solution, want to move everything to the cloud, you can have unified reporting. We can send all the data uh, and the reporting capabilities available with Active Trust Cloud as well. Um, we also have endpoints for Windows and Mac. It can be mass deployed using uh, 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 configuration and change management tools or using uh, McAfee. And if you don't want any agentless, if you want to go agentless, we also provide a DNS proxy forwarding, a forwarding proxy that you can leverage, which is supported on VMware. So all you need is one box, um, virtual, uh, basically, and then that will that will provide you the connection between the uh, endpoints and uh, the uh, Active Trust Cloud. You don't have to install any agents. So some of the tiers are like, you know, we start with 500 users, 1250 users, and so on. So we offer. So we are the only company that offers a hybrid solution. You know, we, we, we have competitors who will say they can do it, but they'll only offer a cloud version. We are, we are the only vendor that offers both the cloud and the on-prem version. So we are very much focused on meeting our customers' requirements as um, as you see fit. Uh, quickly, this is the last slide. Uh, from a security perspective, you can evaluate a free version of Active Trust. Active Trust again is the on-prem version. All you do is go in here, fill out the form, and you can evaluate. It'll allow you to download software to evaluate for 30 days. The cloud version two is available for 30 days. That's another link you can click on. And to learn more about our Active Trust Suite. Suite is the combination of both on-prem and uh, cloud versions. You can go to our product page and learn more, and always open to questions. With that, let me pass it off to David. Great, thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Um, very informative, as always. So I'm going to do a little switch up here. Uh, so is that so? Sam talked about um, problems and solutions and technology, I want to talk about a promotion um, that uh, I think you're going to be interested in, uh, and that's the core bundle, the core bundle promotion. Um, I'm very excited to talk about this, uh, and I hope you'll stick around and listen, uh, because the core bundle promotion represents a new way for buy info box to package and price its products. Uh, and it creates, a, I think, a number of advantages, technical and economic, uh, for uh, for people like you. So um, let's let's go into it a little bit. So um, core bundle promotion. Let's just let's just unpack that for a second. What's that mean? Uh, core. Uh, typically, when Infobox talked about its core services, it talked about um, DDI, 
DHCP, DNS, and IP address management, the things that enable a network. Well, we've learned um, over the years, and particularly recently, that what constitutes true core services uh, needs to go beyond DDI. Uh, a modern network needs not only to be enabled for connectivity, but it needs to be optimized, it needs to be well managed, it needs to be secure. And secure are some of the things that Sam was talking about. Um, so when we talk about core now going forward, we're talking more than just DDI, we're talking about other things, um, additional things. Um, second word, bundle. Uh, what does that mean? That means, well, a bundle is a bundle. That means in this promotion we are, we are including more than just DDI, we're including other products. Uh, so that you can do those things, such as optimize the network, make it more manageable, and uh, make it more secure. And the third word, promotion, well, that's probably self-explanatory. Uh, the nature of the promotion uh, is better prices. Uh, better prices sold, uh, better prices uh, in a different package that's going to make it more economically palatable for you to adopt the Infobox solution. So we have this little uh, internal tagline, there's more to the core. Um, it's kind of a convenient rhyme, but it's actually pretty appropriate. Um, the core bundle um, is about, what's it about? It's about DDI, uh, which is, of course, uh, connectivity enablement. It's about streamlined load balancing, right? being able to use network resources more effectively, being able to do disaster recovery um, uh, easily and, and without a lot of pain, and ultimately improve the end user's uh, experience by uh, optimizing response time. Uh, going clockwise, DDoS protection, Sam just talked about this um, in, in detail, uh, but securing the network uh, with DDoS protection, uh, as well as threat protection. Uh, so um, again, a modern, a modern network has to be secure as well as enabled, as well as efficient. And then finally, uh, reporting and analytics. Uh, you gotta manage a network, uh, and you can't manage what you can't see. So uh, we have a reporting and analytics capability that lets you, that let you uh, actively and proactively monitor what's going on in your network, see who's there, look for anomalies, uh, see problems, create reports, standard, customize, uh, and prove that you're complying with, uh, with laws uh, as well as policies. So this combination of functions, load balancing, DDoS protection, threat protection, and reporting and analytics on top of DDI, that represents um, the new core of core network services. So this is um, in the marketing trade what we call the money slide. Um, this is what the core bundle promotion is about. So uh, again, I'll work uh, around the clock start, starting at the top left. Uh, the core bundle promotion includes these five components. DDI, DNS traffic control, which I'll talk about in a moment, active trust, which Sam spoke about, um, and all those versions, Active Trust, Active Trust Cloud, uh, uh, advanced DNS protection, which is which is DNS-based load balancing, and reporting and analytics. So those are the five, those are the five components. Um, what are the advantages of, of, of this particular promotion? First of all, um, we have very attractive discounts. Um, I'll go I'll go to that a, a, a little bit more, uh, but for the duration of this promotion, which does end at the end of July. Um, so there's about four and a half months more um, to take advantage of this. Um, uh, the prices for these components when purchased in this bundle is uh, quite attractive. We also, we also um, uh, are basing this promotion on uh, a subscription software license model. Why are we doing this? Um, you, you can today, and you always could, you always will be able to buy our software perpetual model, but customers are telling us they want different things today. And the two things they're telling us most commonly are they want to reduce the upfront cash outlay, um, and they want to move spending from CapEx to OpEx. These are the trends. This is, this is, what, this is what customers are telling us we must do. Uh, and the best way to uh, meet those goals is to offer our product, our software, in a subscription model. So that keeps, we think, everyone happy, uh, including Infobox. So, um, so the core bundle promotion is based on a software subscription, uh, which also, by the way, includes all updates um, and patches and feature enhancements without the need for a separate maintenance agreement. So there's a lot of convenience associated with, with, with a software subscription model. Uh, and finally, we have uh, some pretty um, flexible terms here on our software subscriptions. 
um, either license the model for one year, two years, three years, all the way up to five years. And the licenses are renewable. What does that mean, uh, licenses are renewable? If you take advantage of the core model um, after current discounts and you license it for, oh, for example, two years, uh, at the end of two years, you can, in fact, relicense it for another, for example, two years with the same discount, even though, even though the discount program has ended. Um, so that's pretty attractive, we think. And then finally, um, who's eligible for this? Uh, current, current customers, current Infobox users who are using our terms of compliances, uh, as long as they have a, uh, an enforced maintenance agreement and, and upgrade to the, the new generation of terms of compliances. Um, uh, they can take advantage of this carbonyl promotion, as well as any new customers, people who are not using an Infobox solution, as long as they acquire the current generation or latest generation of transit appliances, um, they're eligible as well. So it's a pretty broad sweep. Um, and, and I might note, note here uh, when I talk about new, uh, new customers, uh, Infobox has a, um, a good history of um, successfully migrating uh, organizations from other DDI solutions to Infobox. Um, it's, the, the number is in the hundreds uh, and includes some of the largest networks in the world uh, uh, that we have migrated to Infobox. We have established processes, we have established steps, we have resources that will get you, uh, if you're using something else, to an Infobox solution without loss of data, without downtime. So now let's just let's just talk a little bit about the components. Um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, core model, um, we believe we believe kind of the theme behind our core model is is not compromising, uh, not compromising uh, visibility, security, availability. I'm not talk about availability here. Uh, the nature of our DDI solution is that uh, uh, we believe in service uptime. We believe we believe that's paramount. Uh, the Infoblox grid, which connects our appliances. Uh, the distributed database, which uh, ensures no single point of failure, the ability to have a hot, uh, hot standby appliance on site or off, uh, that makes sure, uh, that ensures that DDI services are always up and running. Um, our service, uh, our DDI services are extremely extensible, um, uh, and that just, and that's not just adding appliances, um, but we integrate uh, with web services, we integrate with AWS, we integrate with Azure. Um, we integrate with the private cloud uh, using plugins to things like the uh, 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 vSphere. Um, we, we move along. Um, and again, uh, all of this is done from a single pane of glass. So uh, with, with DDI management as well as reporting technology, uh, you can see what's going on in terms of DDI and network activity uh, from, from one pane of glass. Response time. Um, we believe you shouldn't uh, you, should, you shouldn't compromise application response time, and our, our DNS traffic control module, which is part of the model, does this. Uh, it, it is based on DNS, uh, and it uses DNS and DNS record information to route traffic to the most appropriate server. Why is this unique? Um, it means you don't need a load balancing solution, load balancing hardware, load balancing training. Um, and all the attended expenses associated with that when you can, in fact, do that within your DNS solution. So uh, kind of the, uh, the bottom lines are just it says right on the bottom line here. Uh, we route users to the right server based on location. Uh, we, we optimize traffic routing for performance. Uh, and uh, we let you do disaster recovery without gray hairs. Visibility, uh, and uh, this is uh, this is the last slide I really camp on. This speaks to our reporting and analytics um, uh, module. Uh, this is the module that is that is based on Splunk. Uh, it lets you see uh, it lets you see and monitor uh, proactively what's going on on the network. Uh, it it helps you understand before uh, before you run out of uh, addresses or DNS records or leases. Um, uh, that that will happen and then let, let you uh, avoid a problem as opposed to have to react to it. Uh, our reporting and analytics improves security uh, by, by letting you see advanced, uh, events associated with attacks. Uh, it also lets you see what's on your network, uh, particularly devices you don't want to, uh, you don't want to be, uh, be on your network. And if compliance is an issue, uh, and in many organizations it is, again, either at a policy level or at a, uh, 
uh, legislative level, uh, you can create reports that prove uh, that you're in compliance with laws uh, and or policies. Um, we, have in, we have here some, uh, some information about security, but I think in the interest of time, we'll recognize that Sam covered this pretty well, so I, I, won't, uh, I won't repeat that uh, for this. So again, um, the core bundle, kind of what does it mean, or if, you're, if you were to lay it out, we look, we look at it this way. Um, Infoblog DDI uh, being kind of the center of the universe, uh, things like, uh, uh, or excuse me, um, software ADP or VADP, uh, uh, filters queries from the outside, ensures that only valid queries reach the network, active trust, um, Active Trust ensures that responses and invalid responses are not sent out. Um, and our DTC, uh, that is DNS traffic control, optimizes where the traffic goes. Uh, and, and monitoring all this sits our reporting and analytics capability uh, so that, uh, again, uh, nothing, is, nothing is out of sight. We look at this set of capabilities, um, this core bundle. This is the new standard uh, for core network services. So if you're interested in um, this core bundle, um, its terms and conditions, uh, uh, there is, there'll be a live link in the presentation we sent out to you. You can also search our uh, website uh, for core bundle to find some information. Of course, any sales rep will, uh, will be happy to tell you about the, uh, the opportunity. Uh, and you can talk, talk to them uh, about getting a quote uh, or just discussing your needs. So with that, we'll move on to questions and answers. Uh, and if you'll give me a moment, let me let me consult the panel, uh, the input panel of, of Q and A, and I'll see what we have here. And the audience has been busy. So, so Sam, here's one for you if you're if you're ready. Um, one of our attendees asks. If I have on-premise DDI and I have users both on-premises and remote, do I need Active Trust as well as Active Trust Cloud? Great question. Yes, since you have DDI on-prem, uh, for the on-prem users, you will need Active Trust, the on-prem version. And for the remote users, you will need Active Trust Cloud. You know, in, 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 you know, when I say remote users, they include <clears throat> roaming users, you know, sitting in Starbucks or uh, branch offices and so on. So you will need both. Um, I believe uh, I will leave that discount up to you, uh, uh, David. But, um, yeah, so I believe you get a discount um, uh, when, you, when you buy both as well, is what I understand. Uh, that, that is correct. Okay, uh, the next question uh, is, is it's one for me, um, relates to the core bundle promotion. Uh, someone, someone was listening, uh, and they understood the details. So the question is, do I have to license all five services in the core bundle for every intrinsic appliance? Um, the answer is no, you do not. Uh, if you have, for example, a network that um, uses, well, let's make it simple, three intrinsic appliances, you have to you have to license the five services that I showed in the model for for only one of those uh, appliances. If you have a network that a large network that requires twenty appliances, same rule applies. You have to license the five services only for one of those appliances, um, and and you get that and you get the discounts um, for all appliances. So again, five services for a minimum of uh, a minimum of one appliance. Obviously, you want to license it for all, all 20 in that case. That's great, uh, but, the, but the minimum requirement is just one appliance. Next question. Um, what are the, this, is, this is kind of open-ended, uh, Sam. Um, good question, though. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits of okay. Thread Insight in the cloud? Say that again. Sorry, I, I, didn't, I couldn't. Uh, could you repeat that? Sure. Yes. What are the benefits of Thread Insight in the cloud? Oh, great question! Thread Insight in the cloud. Yes, that is the that is the product 
that uh, prevents uh, data exfiltration via DNS. So threat insight in the cloud actually resides uh, in the cloud. So that's an option available when you purchase Active Trust Plus or Advanced, the on-prem versions, if that's the ones you want, the customer wants. Uh, it's included at no additional cost. You know, you just pay for the price of uh, Plus and Advanced. It's included for free. And then it's also available with Active Trust Cloud Plus version. So what it does is it does all the analytics in the cloud, so you're not constrained. There is also a Threat Insight on-prem version, which we used to, which we still ship, but that was limited by the size of the appliance in terms of doing analysis. So there was a limitation, you know, depending on the size of the appliance you purchased. The idea is to prevent data exfiltration using three methodologies, um, either using reputation, signatures, you know, known signatures, such as DNS tunneling. And then I talked also during my presentation that that real-time streaming analytics using AI, artificial intelligence, and all that we use in order to look at the streams of data uh, that is passed through DNS queries. So sometimes people are exfiltrating data, you know, in bits and pieces and reconstructing it on the other side, you know, once you get outside. And we are the only ones who used all three methodologies to prevent data exfiltration via DNS. You know, there are other companies that will state that they can do it, but we have time and again proven that we can ex exfiltrate data, um, um, you know, in chunks, and uh, that we are the only ones who can do that. So that's what we call a threat insight in, in the cloud, which is a component of Active Trust, both Active Trust on prem and Active Trust cloud. <coughs> Great. Um, got a couple questions here about the mechanics of the core bundle promotion, so I'll, I'll just take those in order. Um, first question, uh, someone's getting right to the meat of this. I, I noticed that attractive discounts are mentioned. How attractive? Well, um, we uh, we have to skirt that issue a little bit because we sell uh, a lot of our solutions through channel partners, uh, and by rule, we cannot tell we cannot tell our channel partners what to charge for anything. Uh, however, uh, I can say that our discounts uh, are in the um, high double-digit percent range from list, um, and I would uh, I can offer that they are very much worth talking about. Uh, next question is: um, I thought I thought the core bundle program was for existing customers to upgrade. Uh, are you saying that anyone can touch it, can participate? And the answer is that's exactly what I'm saying. Anyone can participate in the core bundle promotion. You do not have to be a neutral box customer today. Again, the only eligibility requirement is that you uh, uh, you um, use or uh, you acquire the latest generation intrinsic appliances. Um, that's it. Uh, so if you are using something else, by all means, uh, this program and all its and all its accoutrements are uh, available to you. Let's see. Next question. Um, yeah, so I, I have a, sorry, sorry, David. There, were, there is a quick question here. I so you know I know it's security focus, so I wanted to take that. It's from Salim who asks if I have an active DPI with uh, DDoS mitigation from another vendor, how can the DNS mitigation help to integrate with Sandwine? So I'm not sure. I, I don't believe we have an integration with Sandwind right now, but, you know, for example, if you're talking deep packet inspection, we have integration of uh, our uh, active trust, which does, D, uh, you know, DNS-based data, uh, uh, data exfiltration prevention and malware mitigation. We can integrate with the next generation firewalls such as Palo Alto. We haven't specifically tried that with, uh, with your DPI, with, with Sandwind. So I'm not sure, but it is doable because we do give you outputs via Tide in various formats, the data. So you can actually, uh, uh, you know, take our DNS indicators of compromise and um, uh, push it to different third-party vendors. But to, be, to answer your question directly, we haven't done the integration with Sandwine yet, but we have done it with other vendors. Sorry, David, go ahead. No, great. I wanted to make sure. Um, thank you. Thank you for handling that one. Um, mm -hmm. 
that's a uh, what's a here's another question. Um, when when do I when do I need only Active Trust Cloud? Yes. So you need Active Trust. Only. Yeah. No. G- g- great question. So I uh, I want to make sure I make that clear. If you're if you have a cloud first strategy, and you you don't have any DDI on prem, and you 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 want to have your DNS firewall if you already have dns firewall host if you want your dns firewall hosted in our cloud meaning because we host it we meaning infoblox you don't want any infrastructure on prem that's when active trust cloud makes a lot of sense because if you are a new net new customer too you know that's the way you want to go because it's only a subscription based model if that's your company model you don't have any staff in-house to manage. You're not a large corporation. Um, Active Trust Cloud can help both protect on um, all the remote users and uh, uh, roaming users and so on. That's when you would use it. And it comes with all the features of on-prem, but just it's all hosted in the cloud. Okay, we have, have another question. Um, question is, Latest generation intrinsic appliances, is that the same as Son of Trinsic? Son of Trinsic being um, an internal sort of name for the, uh, for the latest generation. The answer is yes. Uh, uh, somehow or other, we, uh, um, we, we, we internally coined Son of Trinsic, and, and I got out that, yes, the, the Son of Trinsic uh, appliances are, are what I'm talking about. Um, the easiest way to, to know what is Son of Trinsic is the appliances end up five, as opposed to as opposed to zero, um, uh, and also same question from Ted. Uh, he says we uh, we have a mixed uh, intrinsic a mix of <clears throat> intrinsic and sun intrinsic devices. Um, yes, that um, that is actually quite common um, because intrinsic and sun intrinsic will work together on the same grid. Um, if the implied question is, can you take advantage of of this of the uh, uh, core bundle promotion, uh, given that you have a mixed environment, I think that is a great topic that we should take up with our sales team, and uh, uh, they'll, be, they'll be happy to address it. Son of okay, yes, and uh, yes, and we mentioned Son of Trinsic on our support site. Great, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes okay. we're not the best secret, keep, secret keepers in the world. <laughs> okay, it's kind of. Uh, Let's see, I think we've got about one more attack about about one more question. Uh, yeah, so so let me let me let me take that. that there's a security question here, which which is from Same Ahmed. It says, "Hello, team. A great session. What are the main differences between InfoBlock signature-based ADP solution DDoS cache poisoning attack protection as as compared to other signature-based solutions in the market? First and foremost is how is this First and foremost is ours is focused on DNS. So we prevent DNS-based DDoS attacks, cache poisoning, and all that. Other generic vendors might just provide, uh, you know, general DDoS attacks, you know, on your web traffic and so on. We are very specifically focused on DNS-based DDoS attacks. So that's the main difference, and our signatures are focused on that, getting you... Uh, you know the latest signatures for that uh, for uh, for our DNS, not on a generic DDoS-based attacks that you see out there. So I, I I want to be I want to make sure that's the emphasis here because you will have you have a lot of other DDoS mitigation vendors out there, but we are very specifically focused on DNS-based DDoS attacks. That's the big difference. So we can integrate, we can complement. Uh, our product with other DDoS. We're not saying you only need our DDoS-based uh, 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 DDoS attack protection solution because they're only focused on DNS because you do need those generic ones and we can complement each other. That's how I look at it. We don't compete with each other. Sorry, David. Go ahead. No, no, that's fine. Um, and one more question, uh, a, a, a meeting hygiene question. Uh, is, the, is this being recorded? This meeting uh, apparently it's, uh, it's going to be used uh, 
follow up? The answer is yes. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, and all attendees will receive a copy of this presentation uh, as well as a link to the recording. So uh, yes, you'll be able to uh, uh, yes, you'll be able to access all the all the things we said. So um, thank you for attending. Uh, we're almost at the top of the hour. We really do appreciate you coming. Uh, we do appreciate the questions. Hope you appreciate the information and the answers. Uh, and uh, Infoblox stands by ready to help you out. So again, thanks for coming. I look forward to speaking with you and hearing from you on our next webinar. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you.